everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. It is Thursday, April 24th, 2025. There was a magnitude 2.3 earthquake which struck near Elgin, South Carolina, early this morning at 1.16 a.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time, with the epicenter approximately 3.1 miles or 5 kilometers east of Elgin. This is that earthquake right there. 103 people sent in reports to USGS that they did feel this earthquake. Did you feel it? How long did it last? Um, USGS gave it an intensity level of 3. Felt noticeably indoors, but not always recognized as an earthquake. Standing autos rocked slightly. Vibration like a passing truck. Um, they would have thought it maybe felt to them a magnitude 2.5, not a 2.3. Here on the felt map, it looks like it was felt as far as Charleston. Yeah, they had an in intensity level 3, and there was a historical earthquake um, in that location. Uh, no name there. Let's see, we'll come out. Most of the reports, let's see, came... From close to this location. All right, two, three, three, and three. We'll bring it out a little bit. We also have um, reports from Greensville. One report there, intensity level two. And then this one here says intensity level three. That's 185 kilometers, which would be about 115 miles. Now, Charleston, that was um, 175 kilometers, so that would be about 108 miles, yeah, to the east a little bit here. Now, I've talked about the sun and how the sun's activity does have an effect on the earth. Here we can see the uh, coronal hole. There's actually two coronal holes. Looks like this one is looping up to um, an area of the north on the sun. It takes about 14 days for the sun rotation from um, the western edge to go completely around to the eastern edge. And this is so slowly rotating. And because of the size and the activity, um, there will probably be um, maybe a magnitude 7 earthquake somewhere around the world. Fault lines that are currently under stress or developing stress, yeah, they could be uh, triggered by the protons um, of the plasma coming off of this coronal hole. There was, you can see we got a small spot here. There was a small um, CME from this location. I believe it was yesterday. It's been about 10 years, if not longer, for such a large coronal hole. Uh, to be developing here on the uh, sun. This is an area where um, the surface of the sun is actually cooler and it's actually sucking up um, the different heated energy and then drawing it into this location. And like I said, it looks like it's moving it to the north. The solar winds currently coming off the sun seem to be settling down a little bit. We got some data missing here, but Looks like it was peaking earlier. And here we have um, the different impacts for CMEs and solar winds impacting the Earth. Uh, this actually goes or starts at the 22nd of this month. The little green dot, that is the Earth. Okay, and it's going to, let me pull this up a little bit. Right there is the 22nd. Yeah, look at that. Let me pull it up so you can see the date and compare it to what's currently going on. Yeah, we just don't know where in the world a magnitude 7 earthquake could hit the Earth. Yeah, we just don't know. But we do know that um, in all probability it could very well happen. Here's another image of the energy that's being produced by the sun. And you can see we did have a, a peak earlier today. And it's settling down, but it's still relatively high. This morning's earthquake was located in Kershaw County. 
and it is prone to small earthquakes due to the position between two major strands of the eastern Piedmont fault system. Um, they call it in, a uh, int intra-plate earthquakes, where earthquakes are not normally supposed to happen. Elgin, South Carolina has experienced frequent minor earthquakes, particularly since December of 2021, with over 80 quakes recorded by October of 2023. Yeah, they haven't kept track of how many have been recently happened. I'm going to have to find out um, if I have more data. But these quakes are generally small, with magnitudes typically below a 3.0 though a few have reached up to a magnitude 3.6, such as the one on June 29th, 2022. Yeah, the earthquake that happened early this morning, the 2.3, was even felt as Lancaster and Charleston. A lot of the earthquakes occur along the Eastern Piedmont Fault System, a known but not highly active fault network from runs from Georgia to Virginia. Geologists suggest that these earthquakes may be triggered by hydro seismicity, where water from the nearby uh, Wasri River seeps into the cracks, opening them up, lubricating them, causing additional earthquakes. Let's bring this out. I think I have the Piedmont fault system drawn out maybe yeah okay Eldrin averages about 20.9 earthquakes per year yeah but there's been an uptick lately hasn't there larger quakes say a magnitude 4 or higher are rare occurring roughly every 53 to 57 years the region seismic activity is considered minor compared to historical events like the 1886 Charleston earthquake, which uh, they kind of argue about the size of that, saying it was a, a magnitude 7.3. And there was, um, let's see, 1913, a 6.6. .6. Let me see what else I can see here. Um, it could have been as low as a 6.9 or a 7.3 for that Charleston earthquake. The current swarms are not expected to lead to any major event, but the repeated shaking could weaken the uh, hard bedrock and could weaken the structure over time. Intraplate earthquakes occur within tectonic plates, not at their boundary. And these are less common, but still significant. Uh, on the East Coast, these earthquakes are primarily associated with ancient fault zones that have been reactivated. The East Coast lies in a stable, what they call a stable interior of the North American plate. But ancient rifts and faults from past tectonic activity, you know, like the breakup of the Pangean, can still host seismic activity. Notable faults in uh, this location are such as the Rampopo Fault, the New York, New Jersey area, and the New Madrid Seismic Zone, though more central in the United States. It affects the eastern United States. In 2011, there was a magnitude uh, 5.8 in Virginia, centered near Mineral, Virginia. It was felt across most of the East Coast from Georgia all the way to Canada. It damaged structures such as the Washington Monument. Many of you will remember that. Last there in New Jersey, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake struck near um, Texburg. I'm pronouncing that wrong. T-E-W-K-S-B-U-R-Y, Texbury, New Jersey on April 5th of last year. It was felt in New York City and Philadelphia. No, man, um, no major damage was reported. The East Coast older and colder dense crust transmits seismic waves more effectively than the fractured crust on the West Coast. So even moderate quakes are felt over a larger area. While less frequent than the West Coast, East Coast earthquakes pose a risk due to the dense populations, older infrastructure, yeah, brick buildings without 
um, any type of um, retrofitting. You know, the masonry is really vulnerable to earthquakes. And also there's a problem of limited public preparedness. People just don't prepare like they do on the West Coast. So once again, because of this coronal hole there on the sun, yeah, we could probably expect another magnitude 7 earthquake somewhere around the world, um, at least in, as long as this coronal hole is facing Earth. And it does affect people's health. People don't realize that. It makes them moody. More cases of road rage. We also have um, higher blood pressure and stress upon your heart and different organs of your body. So if you felt this earthquake, please put your comments down below. How long did it last? What did the motion feel like? They don't have a moment tensor ball for this earthquake. And with the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field, yeah, the impacts from the sun affect the Earth even more. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.